My curiosity was aroused when I came across this fish riding a jet ski and then this building with dolphins on it, both signed by someone called Garth. I delved a bit more, starting with Facebook, and it seems Garth, real name Gary, is engulfing Exmouth Town with his art. I just had to get in touch. This is Garth's story. I haven't always been a street artist. My first career after leaving art college way back in 1982 as a London advertising art director. I worked in a couple of agencies there and really enjoyed that career. Um, It involved retouching, drawing, sketching, all sorts of creative uh, input. I did that for five or six years and then uh, took the same skills back to my hometown and set up a graphic design studio. My second career, 20 years later, decided I needed a change of direction and I was asked to paint someone's house. I really enjoyed it. The next 20 years I became a handyman. More recently I've stumbled into my third career. Uh, This has been a combination of my first two jobs. As a street artist I use the skills of advertising illustrator and the skills of a handyman painting walls. My first street artist commission was to help another artist, two of us, painting the sea wall in Exmouth, which the brief was to paint coloured squares, um, lots of straight lines. We painted over 500 coloured squares, Exmouth seafront, over a period of three weeks, and creating something that was bright and cheery. After painting the sea wall, I thought I could do this again and I went round looking for work and I got asked to paint the pilot pub. They originally wanted me to just paint the portraits of some pilots that used to drink in the pub but at the time I had been rowing with the Exmouth Pilot Gig Club and these are pilot rowing boats that were used so I managed to persuade them to let me paint a gig rowing boat on the pilot pub and that went down really well. I then noticed around the town that uh, a building was being renovated. It belonged to a dentist on Roll Street and the back wall I thought was ideal for a piece of graffiti. And I went and asked permission if I could paint on their wall. They asked me what would I paint. I could paint a giraffe and because it's a dentist why not have the giraffe having its teeth cleaned? Uh, Someone in the dentist asked if I could name the giraffe Tilly because Tilly was a giraffe that survived a fire in Paynton Zoo. The landlady at the beach pub approached me and she did ask me if I could paint some uh, piece of art on the pub itself but before then she was having the building renovated and painted and she's got a wicked sense of humour and suggested I paint a bright pink, Barbie pink square, like a paint pot tester square um, by the front door. This really got the locals talking because they thought the pub was going to be painted pink. Up until this point I'd been doing quite either simple graphic work or what I call a a Banksy style, stencil style artwork. Um, But I also had in mind that I didn't want to stick to one style of painting and I was approached by Exmouth Museum. They, because the building itself used to be a stables, they wanted a realistic life-size horse painted as if he was looking out of a stable door. I took on this project and thought, oh no, how am I going to paint a real horse? But after two or three weeks, I managed to get an effective looking horse. And in fact, he does his job. This was a fun project because the uh, museum then got the local school children to enter competitions and suggestions to name the horse, who was eventually named Duke. Exmouth Town is getting known uh, for a dinosaur trail that has been building up over the years and the lady that organised it approached me to ask if I could paint some life-size dinosaurs on the back of the pavilion building. But it took a long time, nearly a year, just to get through the red tape of being able to paint on the back of the pavilion. But the scaffolding was three storeys up. Um, I had walls up to seven metres high on which to paint life-size dinosaurs. 
Eventually I've ended up with seven dinosaurs and they're all pretty much life size. I've now got to a point where I've got quite a lot of pieces of artwork around Exmouth. What I've done deliberately is to try and make the artwork look different as if it was from different artists. I don't have a particular style but I have a number of styles I work in. I can work in a, a Banksy stencil, I can work in a graphic flat colour, I can work in a full colour artistic oil painting type style. And so now I have got to over 15 pieces around the town and decided that I could put together a small app um, that is just a map of the town with all the pieces identified so people can follow a route around or make their own route around and learn a little bit about each painting. I'm aware that street artists have a bad reputation for just being graffiti artists but I do try and make sure that all my artwork is legitimate and either commissioned or agreed ahead with the landlords and the owners of the businesses. Wow, what a busy life you are leading. However, I'm dying to know more about the RNLI project. It's a masterpiece and will certainly attract attention. Also, what is a doodle grid? It's funny that you should mention the doodle grid. This is literally graffitiing um, lines, dots, shapes all over the building. You can do it very quickly. Um, and then take a photograph of those doodles and superimpose them. I use an iPad. I can superimpose my artwork over the top of the doodles. This allows me to work out exactly where each element of the artwork should be in relation to the graffiti doodle. But what happened in this case is because this was the wall of a, of a doctor's surgery, um, the scaffolding had gone up and then two days later it's covered in graffiti. The doctors reckon they had over 50 people coming in saying, do you realise your wall has been graffitied? The RNI called me up and said, Gary, we've heard that someone's um, vandalised the wall, what are we going to do? Um, but really it was all part of the process. Being involved with the RNLI was a very, a very exciting challenge for me and it was really nice when they approached me and said that they were 200 years old and they wanted to um, create some publicity and celebrate. The project was discussed months ahead of it, of it happening. We had problems with permits and things and it didn't actually start until December which meant I hit bad weather. We had a number of storms. I think we had five storms come through and so the whole project was me just running up the scaffolding whenever there was a dry afternoon and squeezing in a few hours um, meant that it took a lot longer than expected. I was fighting against wind and rain and, and just the cold as well sometimes. Uh, the launch day for the mural was arranged. We organised for the scaffolding not to come down until the morning before people were meeting to unveil the mural. The, the guys had decided it would be nice if I didn't sign the artwork until this day and I was climbing the ladder to sign the artwork and I had a whole RNLI crew holding the ladder for me. It was a very humbling experience and there were a lot of people around including BBC Radio, ITV, uh, the, the Mayor of Exmouth and a lot of the RNLI crew and volunteers. Um, were all there to watch me sign the mural. Thank you so much, Garth. Absolutely fascinating. I think congratulations are well deserved for all your artwork. Exmouth is a lucky town. I gather loads of inquiries are pouring in. You are definitely going places. The phone has been red hot. Um, I've had inquiries from schools and sports clubs individuals and other businesses. So I'm looking forward to a summer of mural painting. But my first one that I'll be starting next is a competition that I entered last summer. It's organised by Exeter University and it's a, called a Green Futures Mural. It's going on a wall in the middle of Exeter next to Exeter Library and it's replacing uh, what's known as the Witch's Mural which has been well admired but is sadly ageing and is, is literally um, peeling off. 
I featured my granddaughter on it, who's a young 10-year-old looking forward to a bright, uh, colourful future and turning her back on the bad things we've got in the world. My new artwork will be replacing that piece and it's due to start any time now. <laughs>